We now return to Paranormally Correct with Sarah Spencer and Chad McKenzie. All right, welcome back, guys, from break. You're listening to Paranormally Correct. Uh, our guest tonight is Matt Burns, and we are, we've been talking about spirit guides and past life regressions. And what we're going to do now is we, we stopped everything cold right in its tracks. Um, Matt, your first session with, your, uh, with the medium that regressed you, take off, man. Tell us the story. <clears throat> okay. Well, like I said before, I thought, um, I mean, I almost was sure that she would go and talk about a California life, but um, she went in a completely different direction and started telling me about a life that took place in uh, the time of World War II, uh, Nazi-occupied Poland. And she said, the first thing she said to me was, you were stuck between a rock and a hard place. And she said I was a non-Jewish Polish man um, with a family of about nine children uh, to feed, some of which were probably my dead brother's children that I was also taking care of. And um, basically, I was very, very concerned about how I was going to feed them and take care of them. Money was a big problem, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I guess I... I was some sort of machine operator. I, I owned or I ran a, an excavating type of a company with all this machinery. And um, the Nazis came along um, with a, a job for me. And I think this was before anybody realized how evil <laughs> the Nazis actually w- were. And, I mean, they came along with a job. It was very well paying. And um, I was very happy to get it because it meant, you know, this was, I thought this was an answer from God to how to, feed my family, et cetera. Um, so the, the job was to clear a bunch of um, land in a forest area and to dig these very large holes, which they told me were um, an- going to be anti-aircraft trenches, something like that. Um, so I went along, started doing the job, cleared the land, um, started digging the holes. And the whole time, it was just kind of a shady operation. Um, whenever I asked questions about what exactly I was doing this for, they kind of just told me to be quiet. They hushed up and, and you know, shut up, do your job. Um, so there were kind of some red flags going, going on, but I didn't know exactly, you know, what I was doing. Um, of course, the day came when I finally um, realized um, what I was doing, and I was digging. The holes were actually going to be used as mass graves. And... Um, what a lot of people don't know about um, this this time is that the Nazis weren't just interested in exterminating all the Jewish people. Um, there was actually a campaign in Poland called AB Action. If you do some research, you can look it up. And it was basically uh, an attempt by the Nazis to rid Poland of all its smart people, intelligent people, all the members of the Polish intelligentsia. And um, basically, so they... They wouldn't get in the way of the propaganda machine. They wanted to get rid of all the people who could actually think and maybe organize people to revolt and and um, anybody who wouldn't swallow the Nazi propaganda, essentially. Um, so they they started busing in all, the, all these lawyers, poets, um, doctors, politicians, all these all the members of the intelligentsia started busing them in. And I, I just realized what was going on. And I witnessed them just um, basically executing all, all these people, about hundreds of, of people, and um, just pushing them right into the, the grave. And so, I mean, when I realized what they were doing, and uh, I mean, I, I basically had a choice, a very difficult decision to make. If I walked away, I figured they'd probably kill me. Um, which I don't think was a huge, I mean, that was obviously something to be afraid of, but I think my concern was mostly my family, if, if they would starve, if I didn't have the money to, to provide for them. Um, so ultimately, to make a long story short, I, I decided to go along with it, and, um, and I basically had to bury all the bodies after they were shot. Um, there was probably, like, hundreds of them. And um, so, and... And ever since that day, I was just kind of really, really disgusted with myself in knowing what I did. Um, even though it, it may have meant that I saved my family, 
um, I, I compromised my morality in, in a very significant way. Right. That's something that I, I thought was really profound when I read that. And so you said something about immoral actions. And yeah. you said, you know, is it better to starve to death and, and die? Or, you know, what do you do? Do you contribute mm-hmm. to basically destroying morality? So Exactly. I mean, and it's not even your own life that's at stake. It's it's your family's life, which is, which makes the, you know, the decision even more difficult. Is it worth compromising your morality to save your family's life? And um, I mean, who knows what anyone would do in that situation. But I mean, I think that I was not supposed to compromise my morality. I think I was supposed to... Um, walk away maybe i'd get killed maybe i wouldn't but have the faith basically it was it was a test of faith on my part uh to have the faith that god or the universe or or whatever you want to call it would step in and save my family Mm -hmm. even if if they didn't save my family even if they ended up starving it's it's not really a big deal i mean is it really worth compromising your soul for for people to live a few years And, and even when you when you start to realize that you know, this life is not the only life, um, that there's a whole nother, you know, dimension beyond this life. If, if my family ended up dying, it it really wasn't a big deal. Um, what was, I, yeah, I mean, yeah. In the grand scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah. Right. In the overall big picture. Yeah. I mean, who knows? I mean, that's really an open-ended rhetorical question for any listeners out there to think about, you know, what, is it worth compromising your morality in any situation? Um, and, and again, it's a test of faith. Um, the lesson being, you should always make do the right thing in the moment, do the right thing in the present, and have the faith that the future will unravel, will will be taken care of. I guess. Right. Yeah. yeah, I can definitely agree with that. So um, when you spoke to this medium, did she at any point tell you that um, the decisions and the, the actions that you had taken in that lifetime would, you know, maybe become consequences in another lifetime or maybe bleed over and have an effect on you as Matt Burns? Yeah. She said that, and I've always had a, kind of a melancholy about me. Um, I wouldn't say a battle with depression, but I kind of definitely came into this world with a, a melancholic I mean, there's two sides, two sides to me. I, I'm kind of the upbeat, sometimes a uh, funny person, a uh, fun person to be around. But there's also like the other where um, there's depression and melancholy and stuff like that. You said that the, I'm so just um, tra- I mean, traumatized by what happened in Poland. And I was so disgusted with myself for what I did and just depressed about the world in general and, and how such evil um could exist like what we saw with nazis um that I, it, I lived for about supposedly i lived for about 30 years after i made that decision i think i supposedly probably died in the late 1960s early 70s but but the, 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 i guess from from that life definitely spilled over into this one Right. So this is where the story takes another turn, I think, because after this happened and and you had all of this information handed to you, then you were faced with um, the split where, you know, we're going to get into that theory. And then later on, we're going to have Jenny talk about her perspective on that theory as a psychic medium. Right. And and I got I got a quick question for you, too, Matt. I I just kind of wonder here. Did you ever at any point before this, before you were regressed, did you ever have any strong feelings about the Holocaust or about, you know, that time period, World War II, any of that? Did it ever, was that ever anything important to you up to that point? Yeah. The strange thing is that the first two major films I did in film school all dealt with Hitler and the Nazis and kind of the evil about them. And that, in, in retrospect, I, I kind of did why I made those movies. Um, and the I made a movie called Sympathy for Hitler's Soul, which is kind of a, it's kind of a, a weird type. But it was really short, but it just kind of bored the evil that, um, the evil came out of the Nazis and Hitler and everything. And then the other movie I made was called The Second Beast, which dealt with um, 
that kind of thing. So yeah, it was strange, but I really, I wasn't obsessed about it um, too much. But for some, during a certain period of my life, I was very like concerned about that kind of evil and whether it could happen again and what, you know, another Hitler could arise or another leader like that could, could start doing horrible things in today's world. It's a, so there is some, yeah, there is a connection to be made there, I think. Yeah. Well, that, that's kind of what I was wondering because that's such a, a profound, <laughs> you know, that's, that's not like finding out that you were a gardener. Yeah. You know what I mean? That's, that's such a profound thing. It, it seems like that would almost have to show itself in your present life, you know. Um, seems to me like it would uh, anyway. But that that's just, to me, that story was so powerful. I mean, that's that's not anything, you know, because we all think about, um, I, I've done a lot of research this week into past life regression, and so many times I found out all these people who have these glamorous past lives, you know, it's always exactly what you want to hear, you know what I mean? Yeah. That everybody, uh, according to past lives, uh, you know, apparently everyone did really well in their past life. <laughs> so to hear someone talk about having such a... Um, traumatic. Yeah, such a traumatic and, and troubled... Dark. Yeah. Dark past life. And, and to see that, you know, to hear that it's bleeding over into this lifetime is yeah. is just, you know, it's, it's, it's real. It makes it seem more real to me. Yeah. Anyway. Right.